look, for example, at, at, at traditional development projects that build wells in communities. I had this conversation with somebody early trying to help them understand the, what the model that we uh, pursue brings to the table. He said, well, we don't, we don't fund human rights. We fund potable water. And I said, okay, what happens when the local strongman realizes that there's one well where everybody can get potable water, and because there's no rule of law in the community, he's going to set up a, a fence around that, that well and require people to pay him. And if they don't have money, they won't get access to your well. Then what do you do? And he said, well, that's not a problem for us. That's a problem for somebody else. And so that's a problem for us. And so why do people, why should people or organizations that want to support getting water to people, building wells, et cetera, be supporting this work as well? Because otherwise you're just creating um, a, a power dynamic where people require help all the time and aren't in a position to demand uh, what they need for themselves and, and take control of that. And I think that's really the outcome that development desires is people standing up on their own two feet and having their own access to education and creating their own opportunities. Um, that's what a rights framework gives them the power to do.